subscribe and press the bell icon to never miss another video of Bhakti Charu Swami. Jokpi, you are, I heard that you couldn't go to Chaitanya Mat, but you went to Shiva Shangan yes. and Advaita Bhavan, Advaita Acharya's house. Then you also couldn't go to Chatkazi Samadhi. I heard because you started late. And then I heard you went to Jagannath Temple. So, were you missing Lord Jagannath? Okay, so yesterday you visited the Mayapur comp compound, Chandradaya Mandir compound, and you saw different uh, areas of Mayapur activities. You went to, did you go to Goshala? No? Half of your life is wasted. <laughs> Goshala, they should have taken you to the Goshala. We have a beautiful Goshala here. And, well, I don't know now what to ask you. Uh, okay, today I got two very important devotees from Mayapur. That's why there is Shubhekshana Prabhu. Shubhekshana Prabhu is the... Um, Head of Mayapur Administrative Council. You are the chairman, right? Yeah, he is the chairman of Mayapur Administrative Council. So Mayapur is being managed by a group of devotees. It's called the Administrative Council. Uh, and he is chairing that body. Now, nice thing is, that he grew up in Mayapur. He is, a, he is from Mayapur Gurukul. Do you all know Bhakti Vidya Purna Maharaj? Uh, Bhakti Vidya Purna Maharaj actually started the Gurukul in Mayapur in the early 80s. And that Gurukul actually produced a lot of very, very capable devotees. And many devotees came from different parts of the world and they grew up in Mayapur, in the Gurukul. And hmm, Shubhekshana Prabhu is one of those brilliant boys of Mayapur Gurukul. And actually, we are handing the Mayapur management to these young devotees. And they are managing very nicely. That's why I thought that I would invite them so that you can get to know them and they can get to know you. And uh, Braja Vilas Prabhu, is heading the TOVP project. <laughs> Braja Bilas Prabhu's background is a little different. He is an IT, uh, IIT graduate. What was your line of engineering? Remote sensing. Okay, remote sensing. Remote oh. That's a part of electronics? Yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah, his line was electronics and remote sensing was his specialty. He was in America. He was... Uh, did you get the citizenship of him? No, you didn't. He was, he was in America, he was working. And you can well imagine, you know, the engineers especially those who are in the IT side, how much money they make. <laughs> uh, they make a lot of money. The 
in america two branches make a lot three actually uh, one is doctor one is it and one is lawyer <laughs> so <clears throat> anyway so what did brajavilas prabhu do he left that prosperous life in america and he became a hari krishna <laughs> he became a devotee and then he came to mayapur and he was actually assisting the mayapur development my the temple of uh, vedic planetarium the this construction is going on since a long time and ambarish prabhu needed a very reliable assistant and he found brajavilas prabhu to help him to assist him in that field incidentally let me ask you how many of you know brajavilas prabhu already yeah i thought many more will know because brajavilas prabhu is very famous all over the world and you know what he does he goes around the world <laughs> collecting a lot of money <laughs> for the temple of vedic planetarium and he doesn't think into when he goes out to collect his report is not in thousands or hundred thousands his reports are on millions <clears throat> so brajavilas yeah, prabhu is a very very important young young devotee in our movement especially in mayapur you know we are tovp is relying a lot on him and it is developing very nicely many a times in mayapur tovp project faced a lot of difficulties and those difficulties are mainly financial financial difficulties and braj vilas prabhu is actually assisting in that area very nicely and as a result of that <clears throat> the construction of tovp temple of vedic planetarium is going on unhindered mm, it's going on very nicely so i got these two devotees today so that we can hear from them uh, so i will request subhakshana prabhu to speak first it is the okay hello sir ओमज्ञानचरणीवस्याज्ञानञ्जनाशलोकयाचक्षुरुमिलितमियनतस्मैश्रीगुरवेन्नवञ्चकाल्पतरुभ्यश्चाकृपासिन्धुभेवच्छ
Raja Vilas Prabhu and TOVP team is working very, very hard to uh, create even better, better facility here in Mayapur. Uh, so that as chanting and congregating and hearing uh, can go on very, very nicely uh, for existing devotees and for newcomers to Mayapur. So, uh, as, we all, as we all know, hearing Harikatha is a very, very powerful method of self-realization. Uh, in fact, one who does not engage in hearing of Harikatha is not considered to be a human being. Uh, beginning of a human life means being engaged in hearing about the topics related to Krishna consciousness. So whole Srimad Bhagavatam is devoted to discussions about the transcendental topics of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. However, uh, what you have come here for, it is even more important because there is no entry to the transcendental pastimes of Lord Sri Krishna without appreciating the pastimes of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So we are very fortunate to have His Holiness Bhakti Charu Maharaj in, in Mayapur as such a, a senior and uh, mature devotee of Srila Prabhupada and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uh, discussing the pastimes of Goranga Mahaprabhu in the Gor in Goradham in Sri Mayapur. So we would like to thank Maharaj uh, for this is the second year that he has organized this uh, festival here. So we are hoping that this will become a tradition. Uh, Maharaj is uh, a leader of Mayapur for many, many years. Uh, he has been with Mayapur through thick and thin, as they say. Uh, Maharaj uh, there's many good times in Mayapur and there's many challenges in Mayapur also. But Maharaj is always uh, here with us, guiding and supporting us. We are very, very grateful for that. Uh, we are also hoping that Maharaj will spend more and more time in Mayapur. And along with him, all of you will also spend more and more uh, time in Mayapur. So I just wanted to take that opportunity to request Maharaj, that please Maharaj, um, make more of this kind of programs here in Mayapur and spend uh, time with the devotees here and that will make Mayapur very wonderful and successful. Thank you Maharaj and thank you all of you for coming and visiting the Ram. If there is anything we can do to make your stay more successful, please let us know. We are very, very honored and very happy to have all of you here. This is uh, international headquarters of ISKCON. So what it means, that this is your temple, we are simply housekeepers. We are your housekeepers and we are here to serve all of you. So thank you for coming and visiting your home. Please spend as much time as you can in Sri Mayapur. Thank you very much. I actually invited Shubhakshana Prabhu, because if you have any complaint, you can lodge it to <laughs> And I am confident that there was no complaint. <laughs> it's only ecstasy, right? In Mayapur, everything is uh, so wonderful. And, uh, and as I mentioned, you know, they are actually managing Mayapur. And uh, actually that's our future. Our youngsters are our future. We have to now let them come in the front and lead. And when we see that they are leading so wonderfully, we feel very confident that this movement is in safe hands. Thank you so much, Vakshana Prabhu. Hare Krishna. So now I will request Raja Vilas Prabhu to speak. Namo Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Srimadhe Bhakti Vedanta Swami Nitinami Namaste Saraswate Deve Gauravani Vicharine Nirmi Secha Shunyavadi Pastor Dekhe Shatari Ajana Lambito Bujo Kanakavadanto Sankirtanaka Pitaro Kamalaya Takshu 
ವಿಶ್ವಂ ಬಲೋ ಧ್ವಜ ಬಲೋ ಯುಗ ಧರ್ಮ ಬಾಲೋ ಒಂದೇ ಜಗ ಪ್ರಿಯಕರು ಕರುಣಾವತಾರು ಕರುಣಾವತಾರು ಫಸ್ಟ್ಲಿ ಐ ವುಡ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಟು ಟೇಕ್ ದಿ ಬ್ಲೆಸಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಸ್ ಓಲಿನಸ್ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಚಾರು ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಟು ಸ್ಪೀಕ್ ಎ ಫ್ಯೂ ವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಟು ಇನ್ಸ್ಪೈರ್ ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ಟು ಮೈ ದರ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ವಾಯ್ಸ್ ನೌ ಪೋಯೆಟ್ he said what is the association of a vaishnava what is the association of a devotee he says beautifully says kabira sangati sadhu ki jo gandhi ko vas jo kuch gandhi dehi nahi to bhi vas subhas kabira sangati sadhu ki he says the association of a saintly person is like going to the perfume shop you go to the perfume shop you don't have any money to buy the perfume and there is no exchange of product between you and the shopkeeper but the shopkeeper cannot stop you from taking the smell which is available in that shop that is the association of a saintly person we have here bhakti charu maharaj whether you are in close contact with him or not just by seeing him you will automatically become a devotee <laughs> by his presence what he has inherited from shila propa that aroma that flavor he is giving to all of us this is that association and we are very fortunate to have maharaj here in mayapur and to give us that association to all of us and also to bring all of you from different places different nationalities <coughs> just because on the instruction of prabhupad my idea is to attract the people of the whole world to mayapur that's why you are here today that's because of the <laughs> prabhupad used to say that is history of philosophy and there is a philosophy of history and the history of philosophy is that i'm not going to go so much into it but just the gist i'm going to say that we are here at the maturity of our life at the right time when mayapur is manifesting on the 28th cycle the 51st year the first day of brahma when chaitanya mahaprabhu comes and he wants this temple to manifest and we are here the right time from where from this place the message of lord chaitanya mahaprabhu will spread all over the world and that credit will go to our founder acharya shila prabhupad we pray in guru puja may your name and fame spread all the three worlds from this temple it's going to happen and we are here to witness that we are so fortunate to be here and we are so fortunate to have his holiness bhakti charu maharaj as our leader here and with this i welcome you all to mayapur and you have a very good time here while you are here we have the tivo vip you can come and visit it's adbhut what is coming is adbhut very adbhut this is built by the hands of every devotee of our movement this is the hard labor of love by the devotees of our movement who is building this temple and it is manifesting as a sacrifice of love for our founder acharya shila prabhupada <laughs> so take this opportunity opportunity is knocking on your doors use this opportunity and benefit this become benefit it become ganya thank you all very much hare krishna
Hare Krishna. That reminds me. Uh, did you visit DOVP as yet? Oh, you know that should that should have been one of the main programs. Where is Krishna Kishore? Like, uh, that uh, anyway. Tomorrow you're going to. Okay. How long do you think it will take a tour of TRPP? We can finish in 45 minutes. 45 minutes. Like, what if, what if you come to the TRPP tomorrow in the afternoon? Yes. Huh? Like, huh? Braja Vilas Prabhu? Uh, after lunch, they can come. After lunch? 2.30. Huh? Are you all prepared to sacrifice your afternoon nap? Yes. <laughs> okay. Good. So, <clears throat> tomorrow afternoon so the prashad is at two o'clock i think two or two to three o'clock so three o'clock or maybe four o'clock give Just them a, give them some time to digest <laughs> 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 so and <laughs> so four o'clock tomorrow huh? yeah vp now i have a question how many of you have already Donated for TOVP. Please raise your hands. Very good. Very good. And how many of you want to further donate for TOVP? <laughs> you see, Prabhupada actually gave that assignment to Ambarish Prabhu. How many of you know who is Ambarish Prabhu? Uh, Ambarish Prabhu is the Henry Ford's great grandson, Alfred Ford. And Prabhupada actually gave him the responsibility to build the temple here. So, for the last few years, Ambarish Prabhu has been solely con committed to the TOVP project. To take up to manifest this temple. And Ambarish Prabhu actually could build the temple himself. Mm. But he didn't want to do that. You know why? He felt that such an important spiritual project and everybody should have uh, some participation in that and that's why he is creating that opportunity to f for everyone like he is traveling around the world mm. and you know appealing or giving everyone an opportunity to take part in the construction of TOVP and Braja Vilas Prabhu is assisting him in that very, very wonderful service. Don't you think it's a noble idea? Uh, instead of just one person building the temple, like everyone gets a chance to take part in that. And Braja Vilas Prabhu has so many amazing stories of how people are coming forward in that uh, wonderful service. So that's why, you know, I will request that everybody take part in that and make others also to take part in that. Because by taking part in that, they are going to receive an inconceivable mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Srila Prabhupada. So, uh, whenever Brajabilas Prabhu and also Jananivas Prabhu also goes there. And you know who, get, go, who else goes with them? Uh, apart from Ambarish Prabhu? Nitananda Prabhu. Nitananda Prabhu goes with them in the form of his paduka, in the form of his shoes. From Mayapur, Nitananda Prabhu goes there. Mm. Now, isn't it a wonderful 
Isn't it a wonderful spiritual opportunity hmm, to take Nityananda Prabhu's mercy, Prabhupada's mercy, and the mercy of all the devotees? So, <clears throat> they are going, but I would say that don't wait for them to go to your area. Rather, you go out of your way, you come out of your way and help. I want to say help. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu doesn't need anybody's help. Krishna doesn't need anybody's help. So when you help in Krishna's project, remember that Krishna is giving you an opportunity to render some service to him. And yesterday I mentioned the benefit of serving Krishna. Hmm. Do you remember? I mentioned the fruit vendor, Falwali. And what was the reward? Did I tell you yesterday, didn't I? <coughs> oh, oh, I'm sorry. Okay, yeah, I got mixed up. There were so many things happening. <laughs> okay, in the morning I gave, gave that info, anecdote. Anyway, I'm sure you all know there was a fruit vendor. Actually, in India, those days, even in my childhood, I have seen people would take their commodity and vend it by calling out. Like, they would say, Fall chai go, fall chai. <laughs> that I brought, who wants fruits, please come and take the fruits. <laughs> and this way, whatever they would go out, the commodities that they would sell, they would announce like that. So a fruit vendor was vending the fruits in this way. So Krishna saw that people actually, those days there was no money changing. There was no money for barter. The barter used to take place with commodities. Uh, so somebody came with fruit and you gave that person some rice and in exchange of rice you get the fruit and so forth. So <clears throat> Krishna saw that people barter in this way. So he took some rice and called that lady. Will you give me some fruits please? And by the time, uh, already Krishna's hands were so small, a <laughs> little bit of rice he took in his hands, half of it spilled over. <laughs> and the lady, just by seeing Krishna, uh, her heart was filled with affection. So she just filled up Krishna's arms with fruits. And then she picked up her basket and she was leaving. And then she found that the basket is weighing so heavy. So she was wondering, what's the matter? So she lowered the basket and to her great amazement, she saw that the basket has become filled with most precious gems and jewels. Most precious jewels. So this is the reward for offering to Krishna. Tadaham bhakti uparhitam ashnami. When somebody offers me something with devotion, then I accept that. And when Krishna accepts, this is the reward. And that's not the end of it. You know what happened? When she went back to her village, she couldn't find a house. She saw a huge palace and she was wondering, did I come to the wrong place? And <clears throat> then she saw her husband dressed up like a king, surrounded by so many people just coming towards her. She actually became a king, a queen of that place just because of offering some 
mm, fruits to Krishna. Another such wonderful incident is Sudama Vipra. Uh, Sudama Vipra went to meet his childhood friend Krishna in Dwarka. And Dwarka is the most opulent place. Not only in the material world, Dwarka is the most opulent place in the spiritual world. <coughs> So you can well imagine the opulence of Dwarka. And Sudama Vipra, poor Brahmin, uh, he was hesitating. He was saying that, you know, nicely dressed, ornamented kings and monarchs are coming in. And the gate doorkeeper, the guard, is taking their, uh, taking their identity, checking their identity and selectively letting some people go and rejecting some, some of them. The kings are being refused to come and see Krishna. And Sudama Vipra was thinking, oh my God, like, what chance do I have to enter there? And the guard noticed Sudama Vipra and he came running to him, offered obeisances, oh, please come in is coming. Uh, so Sudama Vipra was somewhat relieved. Oh my, at least finally they allowed me to go and meet Krishna. And when he went to Krishna, what did Krishna do? Krishna made him sit on his throne, washed his feet. <coughs> Rukmini Devi was fanning Krishna. Uh, Rukmini Devi was fanning Sudama. And they were remembering the, the days, early days in the Guru's ashram. And Sudama Bipra took some, <coughs> some chip rice, all he could take, some chip rice that his wife actually got begging from some neighbor. And he tied it up in the end of his cloth and he carried it. Generally, when you carry something for somebody, when you meet him, the first thing you do is you make that offering. But he was feeling so embarrassed, like all I could bring is little chip rice for Krishna. I mean, who is so wealthy, so opulent. So he was feeling embarrassed for not bringing a suitable gift for Krishna. But Krishna himself asked, Sudama, you must have brought something for me. <laughs> Sudama hesitatingly unfolded his, uh, his end of the cloth and said, look, my friend, I could only bring this for you. Oh, cheap price! Krishna exclaimed, for so long I didn't have cheap rice. <laughs> oh, in Guru's ashram we used to have this cheap rice. And Krishna took a handful. And when he was about to take the second morsel, of chip rice, Rukmini Devi held his hand. My Lord, please don't <laughs> take any more. Just this one mouthful of chip rice that you have taken, I have been sold out to Sudama, dear friend. If you take any more, <laughs> then probably I have to go out with a begging bowl. <laughs> and what was the result? Just a handful of chip rice. When Sudama Bipra went home, he found he also felt the same way. Did I come to a wrong place? Where's my heart? There's a huge palace. Mm, so this is how Krishna rewards. Now the question is, are these some fairy tales? No, in the Vedic scriptures, 
there is no room for falsity. In these scriptures, there is only the truth and the truth and nothing but the truth. These all factual happenings. Many of you told me, like, after coming to Vrindavan, after coming to Mayapur, seeing the places of Krishna's pastimes, seeing the places of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's pastimes, you become convinced, yes, it's real. All these places are here since time immemorial, bearing the witness of those happenings. So these are all truth and nothing but the truth. So <clears throat> when it comes to serving Krishna, don't be lazy. When it comes to giving to Krishna, don't be a miser. In that respect, you know, one thing you must all remember. Krishna doesn't see how much you gave him. Krishna doesn't see how much you gave him. Krishna sees how much you kept for yourself. <laughs> hmm. And hmm, the reward is inconceivable. Krishna actually made a condition, you know. As much as you give of yourself, that much of myself I'll give you. Mm. And this condition actually goes to the extent of offering ourselves to Krishna and getting in return Krishna himself. And what do we have for ourselves to, to begin with? Did you ever consider what we have for ourselves? Our possessions are only of two kinds. One possession is a begging bowl. One possession is a begging bowl. That's about all we have. And you know what's the other possession? Is a stolen booty. Like a thief we have stolen. Does it sound shocking? I know I'll become very unpopular <laughs> because telling you the truth. Does anything belong to us that we are claiming are to be ours? Huh? Nothing, everything belongs to Krishna. So that's why there are only two conditions. When we take something without Krishna's approval, it is stealing. We become a bunch of thieves if we accept something without Krishna's approval. And the other consideration is, we are begging from Krishna. Krishna, can I please have it? Krishna, can you please give me? So out of these two, which options are you are going to take? I know which one you will take. As a devotee, we all beg from Krishna and feel thankful to Krishna for that. Krishna, I am so thankful that you have given it to me. You are giving it, giving so, you have given so much to me. Uh, all the food that I needed, uh, since my birth, you provided. Hmm. All the drink that we needed, you provided. All the oxygen that we needed for breathing, you provided. Without even our asking, you may have said, God, give us our daily bread. Uh, we may pray, Krishna bara daya mai kori bara ju bhajai, shab prashad anna dila bhai. But did we ever thank Krishna for the water that he has given? I don't think anyone did. At least I did not. Did we ever thank Krishna for the oxygen that we have got? We took it for granted. Can you imagine the value of oxygen? Uh, just hold your, clip your mouth and close your 
ears, close your nose. Ah. One minute, I'll ask you, how do you feel? <laughs> ah. This is how valuable hmm, oxygen is. We can't survive even for a, even beyond a minute or two without it. So, so this is how Krishna is giving everything to us. So why should we uh, not, not appreciate that, recognize that, and thank Krishna for that? Mm, so let us uh, remain eternally grateful to Krishna for all that he has given us. Mm. Like instead of appreciating what Krishna has already given us, what is our tendency? <coughs> to tell Krishna what we haven't got. Mm. Blame everyone for what we haven't got. But as a devotee, our attitude is, uh, Krishna, I'm so thankful to you. I'm so grateful to you for all that you have given me. Mm. So I do not want to go any further, but simply I want to remind you all uh, that when it comes to giving to Krishna, don't hesitate. Mm. Don't worry, Krishna will take care. <coughs> we are storing our wealth in the bank mm. for our future security. Who knows for how long we are going to live? If we die tomorrow, then what's the use of having all the money in the bank? Anyway, you all are very intelligent individuals and I'm sure uh, you will act with that understanding. <clears throat> Thank you all very much. So today, Krishna Kishore was asking me which song should we sing today? My first reaction was, I don't know, just you figure it out. But then I got a very bright idea and I called him. And I thought, what about singing an English song for a change? We sang Sanskrit songs, we sang Bengali songs, we sang Hindi songs. <laughs> what about an English song? What's your response? Yeah. Does this Haribol mean yes or no? <laughs> <laughs> so, <clears throat> I have selected one English song by Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur. And this song Bhakti Vinod Thakur wrote in 22 stanzas. It's a poetry. And this poetry actually gives everything. If you just understand this poetry, you will understand everything. Once I was sharing this song, I was explaining this song to a very important person. And he was so impressed that right away he decided to send it to all his friends. Uh, because you are so impressed. Anyway, I selected only eight verses out of the 22. And it goes like, uh, the title of the song is Shara Grahi Vaishnava. Shara Grahi means one who collects only the essence. Mm. You know, a Vaishnava is considered, a saintly personality is con compared to a swan. Why? 
why a saintly person is compared to a swan? Because a swan has a unique ability to separate milk from a mixture of milk and water. And the swan can take only the milk and leave the water. How many of you knew about this quality? And how many of you knew that a saintly person is compared to a swan? Hamsa, Parama Hamsa. Hamsa means a swan. A transcendental swan-like personality. Is a Vaishnava. So that's why he's saying, a Shara Grahi, the one who accepts the essence, Shara. One who, in the mixture of matter and spirit, he accepts the spirit and rejects the matter. Hmm. <clears throat> so the eight stanzas that I have selected, there, I'll just read in English, and I'm sure you'll understand. <laughs> Alas for those who spend their days in festive mirth and joy. <clears throat> the dazzling deadly liquid forms their hearts forever employ. Alas was the meaning of the word alas. Many of you are from England and Australia. Huh? What is the meaning of the word alas? Okay. Huh? No, alas means I feel pity, alas, alas, it's an exclamation, alas, alas, it happened to him. So alas for those, I feel pity for those who spend their days, how do they spend their days? In festive mirth and joy in festive mirth and joy of this material world. Those who are trying to spend their time trying to enjoy in this material world, Bhaktivinoda Thakur is saying, alas for those. Hmm. <clears throat> the dazzling deadly liquid forms their hearts forever employ. What is that material uh, glamour? Hmm. The dazzling deadly this form, the material forms that are attracting us, uh, they are yeah, apparently very attractive, dazzling, but is deadly. Uh, that attraction is actually taking us, inviting us, leading us towards death. Deadly, liquid forms. And it's, the forms are liquid. Does liquid have a form? It appears to have a form, like a fountain. It looks like there is a form, but for how long? For a moment, it's gone. Uh, liquid forms, their hearts forever employ. Their hearts are attracted to. <clears throat> the shining bottles charm their eyes. Here, he is comparing those people to a drunkard. Uh, the shining bottle, <laughs> bottles of uh, liquor, uh, Johnny Walker. <laughs> <laughs> the shining bottles charm their eyes and draw their hearts in press. They're so addicted to it, they just they would give anything to have this bottle. Shining bottles charm their eyes and draw their hearts embrace the slaves of wine. Ultimately, he is revealing their identity, who they are. The slaves of wine can never rise from what we call disgrace. It's disgraceful to be a drunkard. <clears throat> the slaves of wine can never rise 
from what we call disgrace. Then you're leaving a few stanzas. Then uh, I'm coming to the another very important point. The flesh is not our own alas, the mortal frame a chain, the soul confined for former wrongs will try to rise again. Isn't it beautiful? You see, this is the brilliance of Bhakti Vinod Thakur. Actually, you know, I used to be very fond of poetry. But to tell you frankly, you know, I haven't come across poetry like Bhakti Vinod Thakur's. Mm. They are brilliant poets. They can they express their emotion uh, in beautiful presentation of rhyme and meter. But uh, in incidentally, most of the English poets actually do not follow so strictly the rhyme and meter. It's kind of free-flowing most of the cases. It's simply uh, expression of emotion. My heart aches and a drowsy numbness pains my senses as the hemlock I had drunk. <laughs> so, no, no rhyme and meter as such. But yeah, emotion is there. This is actually kids. <clears throat> and, but Bhakti Vinod Thakur, see the meter. <laughs> the flesh is not our own alas. The mortal frame a chain. The soul confined for former wrongs will try to rise again. <laughs> Like one very famous, in English poetry, Coleridge is very famous for his rhyme and meter. And similar kind of rhyme and meter, like the day was bare, the harbor clear, merrily did we drop, below the hill, below the kirk, below the lighthouse stop, the rhyme of the ancient mariner. So, but Bhaktivinoda Thakur maintained that meter and rhyme throughout. And isn't it such a beautiful presentation? The flesh, our body, the flesh is not our own. We are saying this is my body, but the flesh in this body is not mine. The flesh and bone and fat and marrow and skin. <laughs> the flesh is not our own alas. The mortal frame a chain. This mortal, this perishable, prone to death, this frame is actually a chain, is a bondage with which we have been tied down to this material nature. The flesh is not our own alas. The mortal frame a chain. The soul confined for former wrongs. Why the soul has been confined into this body? For former wrongs. For past misdeeds. The soul confined for former wrongs will try to rise again. Ah. Isn't it beautiful? <coughs> Go to the next, listen to the next one. Then a voice, how deep and soft, within ourselves is felt. Man, man, thou art an immortal soul. The death can never melt. Then a voice, how deep and soft, within ourselves is felt. We heard a voice from within. Uh, man, man, thou art an immortal soul. You are an immortal soul. Death can, the death can never melt. Death cannot melt you. The body may die, but soul never dies. The death can never melt. <clears throat> Forget the past that slips and never future dream at all. Uh, forget the past. Uh, 
We are all dwelling in our past. Oh, how nice it was when I was 25 years old. <laughs> how nice it was when such and such thing happened to me. Forget the past. The sleeps, it'll never come back to you. It sleeps. Forget the past that sleeps and never future dream at all and don't dream about the future. But act in times that are with thee. But act in time that is the time that is with you. What is that? The present. Utilize your present in the most fru fruitful way. <clears throat> but act in times that are with thee and progress thee shall call. And that is real progress. Maintain thy post in spirit world. Mind you, I have selected only few. So many of the stanzas in between I have left out and selected just the important ones. Maintain thy post in spirit world as firmly as you can. <coughs> Let never matter push thee down. Let never matter push thee down, O stand heroic man. In your spiritual strife, do not let matter, do not let these material happenings discourage you, demoralize you, demotivate you. Hmm. Just stand, heroic man, on your spiritual path. <clears throat> o Sharagrahi Vaishnava soul, thou art an angel fair. Lead, lead me on to Vrindavan and spirit's power declare. <laughs> so, O Sharagrahi Vaishnava soul, who is that Sharagrahi Vaishnava soul? the devotee of the Lord. Mm. Thou art an angel fair. Mm. You are the fair angel who is protecting me, who is guiding me. Uh. Thou art an angel fair. Lead, lead me on to Vrindavan and spirit's power declare. There rests my soul from matter free. There rests my soul from matter free upon my lover's arms. Now the soul free from the bondage of matter, uh, free from the bondage of matter is uh, lying in the embrace of a lover. So who is that lover? Krishna. There rests my soul from matter free upon my lover's arms. Eternal peace and spirit's love are all my chanting charms. So <clears throat> there in the embrace of my lover who do I, what do we get? Eternal peace and spirit's love. And that is the chant, that is all my chanting charms. <clears throat> <clears throat>